Good morning, everybody. Hope you guys had yourself a wonderful three-day weekend. Mike Tedeschi, investment strategist over at Perspective Wealth Planning. With this week's video, we're going to take a look at the major four U.S. indexes. We're going to take a look at the U.S. dollar. We're also going to take a look in at oil. Um, and so let's jump right into it here. Um, we have seen more downside action here this week. And the S&P 500 stopped falling yesterday right on its 200-day moving average. Now, one of the things I wanted to discuss in the beginning of this video here is the importance of the 200-day moving average. And if we go back in time, we notice the first time the, the market tends to test the 200-day moving average after a long period without testing it, it usually ends up being important. We can see this back here in 2016, late 2016, and of course, uh, last year, at the beginning of last year, where we tested it three times, and all three times, it was very important. Uh, the market was trading well above it for a very long period of time. 200-day moving average was sloped up, and it was a while before we had tested it, and we can see that it acts as an important area of support. Now, if we look later in the year, once we break underneath of that, we trade above and below it, we trade above and below it, we trade above and below it, um, and it is flattened out. 200-day moving average is a lot less important when we're trading up and down through it all the time, and you can very clearly see that through price action. Um, this year, we came all the way up. We failed at the 200-day moving average. Again, we hadn't been back at that zone for about three, four months, so it, it played an important role. Um, and we broke above it, and then it acted as support. And once again, here we are testing it for the first time in a few months. Should act as an area of support here, at least for a few sessions. Now, why is that? The reason is because long-term investors are taking a look at the market and trying to find a zone in which they can make a play, a dip to buy, so to speak. And when you haven't tested the 200-day moving average in quite some time, if you go back to the beginning of, of last year, right, we had that sharp sell-off. You know, when we're five, six days into this, people are looking at the area in which they want to make a purchase. A ton of buy orders basically come out there and are sitting near that 200-day moving average, and that is why price comes down to that zone and makes that sharp bounce. And that self-fulfilling prophecy, everybody kind of looking at it. When we're trading above and below it frequently here uh, a lot, pretty much every day over the course of a couple of months, the 200-day moving average loses its importance. There aren't as many orders that are sitting on it, and subsequently people aren't using it as that key level. Right? When we come back to this year, everybody was watching the 200, the test of the 200-day moving average on the underside, and that is why we made that you know three, four-day, three percent pullback uh, because it was a lot of of price action structured right there at that point. And here we are once again, a lot of people looking at that 200-day moving average as that important zone, that important area. So a lot of buy orders were sitting right there. And of course, uh, at the end of the day yesterday, we did see that bounce. So if we're looking at this market right now, we've been talking about this for quite some time. This 200-day moving average is really important. But again, as I have always said, it is not just a number. It is a zone. Support zone for me at this point in time comes all the way back to the lows back in March. And that's that 2700 20 level on the S&P. Uh, if we lose that, it's really wide open back towards um, really the lows of the years. And that should be a major concern for the bulls if we lose that zone. The rest of the index is very similar except for um, the Russell. I'll get into that here in just a second. Here's the uh, the NASDAQ, right? 200-day moving average held. You know, we can see all the lines that we've put on this uh, chart here over the last few weeks. But bottom line, again, it is a support zone, and that zone is right here on the NASDAQ. So any more downside really underneath this 200-day moving average would cause this, the same issue that we just talked about there on the uh, S&P. We take a look in at the Dow. The Dow is below its 200-day moving average. So leading to the downside, and actually yesterday broke underneath those lows from March. That's a big concern here for this market. Um, it closed right there on that level. Any more follow through to the downside really would uh, would open this up um, back really into that about 24 200 level, uh, which is really that next zone of support there on the Dow. And um, very interesting to see them lead a lower here along with the Russell. Well, we've talked about that a, a ton. It has been uh, extremely weak. It is under the 200-day moving average now for the last two weeks. It has spent the majority of the last uh, ye almost a year at this point in time under the 200-day moving average, really about eight and a half months. Um, 
And it broke underneath that key 1500 level. Any more downside follow through here really opens this up back to the 1430s on the uh, on the Russell, and then there really isn't much support until we get back towards those lows. So when we take a look at the four major indexes here, we have the Dow making that breakdown and the Russell making that breakdown, the NASDAQ and the S&P still sitting right above that 200-day moving average. Basically, across the board, the bulls do not want to lose another step. Um, any more follow-through to the downside will probably be met with more selling because there's a lot of people that are watching these levels, and when they break, Profits will get taken from earlier in the year, and new additions will be added in on the short side as people kind of press those shorts in um, as we head into the uh, end of the summer. Let's take a look now at the dollar. Uh, the U.S. dollar still banging into that resistance zone. It's poked its head out a couple of times. Can't make that breakout. Um, subsequently, we're paying attention to commodities here and what they're doing. Uh, oil at a very interesting juncture. We've looked at this a number of times. Major resistance level up at 66, right? And again, if we're looking at this, it is a zone. It's not a number. It's really from about 64 and a half all the way up to 66. And you can see the importance of that price action play out back here, back in here, uh, here as well, right? We can see very, very important um, decisions have been made right here in this. Uh, we had a great rally this uh, the beginning of this year in oil right up into that resistance zone, subsequently failed and has sold off, and we're back underneath that 200-day moving average, which is still on oil declining. Um, so that is a concern. Uh, when we take a look here, where might be a zone in which we could see um, oil start to consolidate? Well, the first FIB retrace level that we take a look at here, that 38.2, is what we tagged here a couple of times this week, and subsequently, it is holding on. So the bull case is, ah, this is just a shallow uh, correction after a big, long move forward, you know, a normal retracement, holding it right here, and we'll go and we'll, uh, you know, continue to rock and roll. The bear case, of course, is we're underneath all the moving averages, and this could very well be that setup bear flag uh, for a continued push lower. I would watch the lows from this week. If we lose those, I would expect us to to take a look at that 50% and maybe that 61.8% retracement. And that could be good news for everybody in the U.S. traveling this summer. If oil were to continue to fall, gas prices would be cheaper for the uh, summer travel months. So we'll certainly continue to pay attention to that. I hope you guys have yourself a fantastic uh, rest of the week. As always, I'll see you guys next week. Hope these videos uh, are helpful for you. If you have any questions, comments, uh, please feel free to leave them. And of course, if you like the video, please do like and share it. Um, have yourself a fantastic day.